Hey, how's it going? I am the Sanguium, and welcome back to Create Above and Beyond. Now, I bet you're wondering why we're in a cave. Well, since I used my last lava source to make a cobblestone generator, I kind of need to find another one. Also, now I have a skeleton being mean to me. Ow. Uh-oh, he fell. Gotcha! So let's make our way up here and kind of clear this out, I guess. Gotta be real careful when messing with lava. Oh! Well, didn't see that coming. Oh! Oh! We're up here! Ah! Light that up a little bit. Alright, you know what? Let's grab, uh, this one. I'm assuming now that that lava down there just came from here. And we have another thing of lava over there in case we need it. Ow, my ankles! Okay, I made it down. Huh. Pretty convenient. But now that we have done that, there's still plenty of other things we need to do before we get started on making our starter base. First off, we need to make that cannon, because it will provide us a list of things to get. I have some good news and bad news about this, by the way. Good news is, I did learn that there is a special type of chest, it's called a, it's called a compacting drawer, and basically, if a bunch of iron nuggets go into this thing, it will automatically compact them into ingots. And then from there, I'm assuming it would also turn them into blocks. The bad news is, this thing is also collecting flint. And because it's also collecting flint, I don't think it works the same way. I don't think it does. I think it can only hold the one thing. Let me, let me actually, let me actually look it up. Okay, here it is. This is a compacting drawer. Holds 128 stacks per drawer. Supposedly it's ah, uh, oh, you know what? I don't mind. i you know what? Let's 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 make it real quick. We need zinc, which oh, I gotta go down and get some zinc. All right, we got 31 uh, crushed zinc ore. We're gonna have that grind up, and while we're waiting for that. Let me go ahead and explain uh, one of the other things we need to do. We need to make an automatic tree farm. Uh, we can make it semi-automatic. And a semi-automatic tree farm is basically a mechanical saw attached to a piston pushing forward. That's all we need, so uh, might as well uh, make that. Put that there. That's probably as much as we're gonna need, really. Alright, now we need a hand crank. Put that there. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, some super glue. Now what we're doing with this, go ahead and dab a little bit there. We make a barrel, and then we slap that barrel down here. Now, to get the whole tree down, if I recall, it needs to take down the last piece there. So let's go ahead and do that. And after it gets this next one, it should all fall. Excellent. Pull it back in. And we have 22 saplings and this... What did that say? 60? 60 logs. Almost a whole stack of logs from that. So let's go ahead and uh, set it up again. 
And then when it grows, it'll just do it again and again and again, and we'll get tons of logs. Perfect, all right. While we went ahead and built that, this thing should have tons of zinc ready. All right, here's some drawers. Well, this is a trim. Wait, did I make the wrong thing? Oh, no, 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 I made the... I, I, it was okay, I just have to uh, put it in here. Okay, so this thing... Supposedly, will work. Oh my gosh, stop it, please. Please go in the right spot. Yeah, it's trying to make flint blocks. Instead of iron. That's that's what I thought would happen. I tried it anyway, because why not? Alright, in the meantime, I guess we could just, I don't know, put that here. Oh! Interesting, it acts kind of like a shulker box, huh? Oh, that's fascinating. Here, let me, let me manually remove. So now there's seven ingots in there. Oh. And if I want, I can just... Yeah. Alright, you know what? I like that. I'll leave that there for the iron. In fact, let's go ahead and... Put all that in there. Oh, that's so cool. Alright. I dig it. That'll make crafting this uh, stuff a little bit easier, too. Okay, next up. The cannon. The cannon and the schematic table. And iron block. I need a dispenser. Which requires a bow. I do have some string here in the form of cobwebs. Alright, so now let's make our schematic table. Excellent. We will go ahead and put it... Uh, here. Now we gotta make our... Cannon. We're missing an iron block. Fortunately, we can just... Go ahead and do that. House building cannon, yep. It would be cool if we could use this to build the base, but... It requires gunpowder. How much gunpowder do we have? We actually have a decent amount. But you can't just make gunpowder. You need, a. Uh... Yeah, you need a bunch of stuff we don't have. Right, but now we have this. So let's go check on our cows. Yeah, now we got a bunch of them. Quest complete, the ranch. That's right, we have a quest book too. I haven't looked at that since the first episode. We ought to look at it once we have uh, our recipe book. Fun fact about sugarcane. You can press it into paper. So you don't need exactly three. Now we need some light blue dye. There's a child! Oh, there's a child. Okay, let's get out of here. Alright, we have an empty schematic, and we have a book. So let's go to the schematic table. The Mega Mill Wagon. That's gonna load the schematic on there. How are we doing over here? Not, not bad, not bad. Alright, and here's our schematic. As you can see, it's a little big. But we're not going to place it. We're going to put it here. We're going to put a book in here. Not positioned. I guess we have to position it. Alright, we'll pick up the cannon. Oh, weird. Can't pick it up with the wrench. Alright, everybody, brace yourselves. This is, uh, this is our base. 
kind of hard to see from here, but I'm sure you can see the inspiration from uh, Scar. Yeah, I got a rope leading up into it. So let's put the can in here. Alright, now we have a checklist. Giving us everything that we need. We need a uh, hundred blocks of white wool. We need a windmill bear. We need 23 super glue. Stripped birch logs. We need 157 stripped spruce logs. We need 29 stone cutters. We need 35 smithing tables. We need a lot. Yeah, we need, we need a lot, so we're gonna get a lot of stuff. I'm gonna do a lot of the material gathering off, uh... Like, not off camera, I've thought about maybe trying to time-lapse it, but... I can't get, um, the replay mod working, because it requires fabric to work. And the C Create Above and Beyond uses, uh, well, at least the version I'm using, uses, uh, Curse Forge. It's a Curse Forge mod pack. So I can't just throw it in there and it work. Like, it needs to be running on fabric, not forge. So I I'll see if I can figure something out. If I can't, I'll just cut to when I've gotten all the materials. I'm pretty sure we have most of everything we need here. Like, a lot of this stuff requires iron, which is why I wanted to get the iron farm uh, mocked up before uh, starting so that while I'm gathering all this other stuff it um, makes iron a background and we need flint blocks so that's another reason I wanted that okay, a lot of diorite rope is something I'm worried about though I'll need to get some sheep over here to do the shearing I bet I could fit them in the maybe in the cow pen I could probably make another pen for the sheep 11 fence Let's do that real quick. Let's go gather so get to, let's go gather up some sheep. What's that? Is that one of those Tinker uh, Slime Islands? Oh, I think it is! Ooh, neat! Okay, I'll have to remember this spot. Here, hold on. I was just heading off in the direction I thought was the... The forest. In older versions, these they would be slime islands in the sky, but I guess they finally realized that uh, that looks super ugly. So I guess they have uh, fallen to the ground, you know? Oh, I found a well! There's nothing really in the well. There's some iron, but we don't need that. Here's some sheep. Alright, come here. Ah, three. The more the merrier. Plus, I might accidentally lose one of you along the way. Alright, this is going to be a very painful trek, because I walked pretty far from the house to get here. Is that a mountain? Is there a mountain over there? I thought I saw a mountain. That... I forgot. These guys are slow swimmers. At least it's still high noon. Like, it's not gonna be nighttime any moment. Is there a house over there? I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. Oh my gosh, so many interesting things, and I have to deal with sheep. I thought, I think in addition to wood planks, I saw brick. It was a wooden brick house. Oh man. You sheep are preventing me from adventuring. How dare you! How dare you! You. I think I last died at the hill, so that's 
Red Beam should be the hill. Which means we still got quite a ways to go. I see another signpost over there. Can't go to it though. Sheep! I got sheep to herd. Oh, I guess I did die in the mines. I remember when I looked up in the sky and it was a noon? It's definitely not new now. It's almost night! This took all day! Oh my goodness. Just get this pen. Alright, you, you have to get a little smarter. Okay. There's your reward. I guess only two of you could breed, that's fine. It's- I, at least I made it back just in time for night, you know? Would have sucked if I had to guide all those sheep while I was getting shot at and ran at by zombies and all that. That, that would have been unfortunate. We have a knife. Hunt and gather. So if I was to... Grasp your straws. Okay! So I can make rope with this. Alright, I, I actually don't think this is the same rope I used in my design, but I'm sure it'll work. So, that we can we can get everything we need then. I'm pretty sure that's, that's everything. We just need to get the stuff now. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and gather some stuff. Be right back. So, most of this was just, you know gathering like maybe at most a couple stacks of materials so I'm not really gonna show the whole thing of me doing this but yeah like for example this is just me getting a little bit of birch because you know I needed a bunch of birch slabs a bunch of birch stairs and I learned that you could use the saw to make like six planks from one log of wood which is pretty fantastic and then you can saw that again to make slabs, and apparently a couple other things. But, when I went ahead and uh, tried it, I accidentally made a table and a stool, and I panicked to uh, set the filter as a slab, and ended up putting a slab on top of the <laughs> saw. So now I just was like, oh, I guess I have a table and a stool now. So I kind of just put that in the corner of my cave. You'll, I, I'm sure you'll see it later. And uh, to make it a little bit easier, I go ahead and put a funnel to collect the logs that get stripped and uh, turned into planks and slabs and everything. They they kind of just fall right into the uh, right into the funnel, so that I can go off and do other things while that happens in the background. And I go over to see my iron generator is overflowing with cobblestone because the storage is full. So I end up picking up and I look inside and it's working really well. It's making a lot and it's not even collecting that much gravel too. Most of the gravel is being washed. But yeah, as you can see, it was completely filled so I had to turn it off for now. And this happens many times throughout my, uh, throughout my, uh, recording. But then I go underground to get some diorite and I find a cave entrance. I kind of ignore it for the time being, because I'm, I'm down there for diorite, I'm not down there to cave, so I go back to that mining, and as you can see, the ladder is right there, it's right there at the entrance of the cave too, which is pretty wild, so I go back down there later, to, and I grab a little bit of coal for torches, but yeah, I go down to explore this cave, because I need iron for those smithing tables. And, uh, it's actually a pretty big section of the cave, and it is connected to the cave I already explored. Like, you can see over here where this ravine is, if you look down there, you can see a bunch of torches, because over there is where that laboratory is that I fell into a couple episodes back. And, and what didn't you know, it? there's also a mine shaft here, and after making short work of this here spider, I look in the chest, and there's rope. Rope. 
I was so happy because apparently rope, the rope I used in the blueprint, is rope made from flax. And flax is not something you can just grow. It's more of a dungeon item. And I didn't know that when I designed it. And I, I can't believe I found it. I, I'm so happy because now I don't have to, uh, now I can include in the recipe. I even do a little dance here because <laughs> I'm so happy about it. But yeah, I just continued to explore and get enough iron to finish off that last thing on the checklist. Once I was done with that though, I decided to, hey, you know what, let's go explore that part of the cave I haven't explored yet in hopes to find some creepers. Because if we get enough gunpowder, we can fuel that cannon without having to worry about building around that uh, not see-through template that it shows. So I went ahead and uh, looked around for some creepers, although unfortunately I bit off a little bit more than I can chew because while there were a lot of creepers, there was a lot of everything else. So many zombies were showing up, so many skeletons were showing up. For some reason, a horde of like six zombie children was chasing after me. It was madness. And half the creepers I found exploded because I was too busy dealing with all the other mobs. Look at all these zombies. I had to run away from them on the other side of the stream and have the stream flush them away because there was just so many of them. But yeah, I just go ahead and walk past that and there's a bunch of creepers over here. And uh, fortunately, some of them drop creeper catalysts, which is equivalent to six gunpowder, making, despite the fact that I had so many troubles, I still came out of this situation with a lot of gunpowder. So I headed back to the surface where uh, to, uh, I killed an enderman holding a grass block. So that I uh, just saw him next to it, just thought, hey, grass block, cool. I go to deposit the gunpowder, and then, whoa! Creeper shows up. Almost destroyed my entire storage of items, which would have been very terrible, but fortunately I caught it just in time. But yeah, I go to put it in there, and we have a whopping 31 gunpowder. More than enough to, to use the cannon. Alright, so we have collected everything we needed for this. We have a whole bunch of diorite that's paved, we have stone cutters, flint pillars, ornate iron windows, which uh, require andesite alloy, by the way. And we even have 35 smithing tables. And a whole bunch of super glue. I believe it's 24. We have another chest here, just in case, but yeah, it didn't happen. And now... We got lots of gunpowder too, so I'm very tempted to just fire this thing and let it build the contraption. I'm thinking, what if I turn this thing on and then I get a nice aerial, aerial view of the whole thing being built and I can speed it up for your guys' viewing pleasure. You know what, I think that would be fun. It would be our first time uh, using the schematic cannon. I think one of the few times we're going to be using it. Because when we go to build our mega base, which is going to be a big factory, I don't think we're going to be using a schematic cannon. Because we would have to be placing everything ourselves and thinking about it very logistically. So this might be one of the few times we get to use, we get an opportunity to use one in the first place. So you know what? I actually am going to be using this. I'm going to get me a nice spot. I think right here in this tree would be a good spot. Alright, let's turn this on and have a look-see. So, it's pretty much done. Now it's just super gluing everything, making sure everything is uh, together. But most of these blocks have been placed. The whole uh, the uh, mega mill wagon is looking pretty spectacular. So let's give it a quick look. See, and as you saw in the time lapse, I had to. Oh, oh. they turned white. 
Oh, interesting. That's very interesting. They were yellow when I put them in the chest. So I guess uh, when they shot out of the cannon, they were dyed white. That's that's very fascinating. But yeah, we got us uh, our main um, connection to the windmill here. This is where we can connect up all of our uh, basic create machines. And we have a nice little spot here where we could put some crafting tables, maybe a storage system. We got a nice balcony out there. Oh, we got some some terrible neighbors that we could say hi to from the back here. And as you can see, the ceiling and floor are, are uh, we have a smithing table floor and a stone cutter ceiling here. So we don't really need to incorporate those in. Although we could anyway, it's just for aesthetics. We got a nice deck here that we don't really have a, much of a use for. Who knows, we might find a use for it later. But yeah, we got the, but as you saw, we have a rope here, we can kind of climb up and down. This rope, uh, you might have seen in the time lapse, it didn't, uh, it wasn't staying, so I had to go and make it myself. The underside of the Mega Mill Wagon is pretty spectacular. It's got these big flint pillars, keeping it, uh, tying the wheels together. And you'll notice that I took a lot of inspiration from, uh, Good Times with Scar in terms of the, uh, the chassis. And the windmill design is actually a design by, uh, Smallish Beans. In one of his, uh, videos, I believe it is the I spent 24 hours building in a flat world. He made, like, a fairy town, and he made this cool windmill, and I kind of used the design of that windmill here, just because I really liked how it looked. So, yeah, this is, uh, pretty much a mix mash of, uh, some inspiration I've uh, gleaned from Good Times with Scar and uh, Smallish Beans. So, yeah, I'll link their channels in the description. Uh, you should really check them out if you don't know, uh, if you like what you see here, but you haven't heard of them. Now, what are you doing here? A globe, Lily of the Valley, Fungis, White Tula, Brown Dye. Fungis is looking a little expensive. What exactly is this for? Fungi stem. I guess it works like wood. Fungi door. Well, I mean, I don't really see much of a use for it other than it looking kind of different. Plus, you still owe me another lead. So give me that. And get out of here. Now let's take a look at the. Uh oh. It's overproducing again. Also, I left a shaft here by mistake. Yeah, that, that'll happen every now and then. Making a ton of flint. Look at that. We've almost got a, a, a one full chest's worth of flint here. I was thinking about turning that zombie villager down below into a Fletcher for so I can sell him all that flint. And look at that, despite having to use so much iron for uh, smithing tables, we still have seven blocks of iron thanks to this thing running in the background while going down in the mines and gathering a little bit of a boost so that we had enough. When I was done making those smithing tables, by the way, one of the last things I made, I believe we only had a couple ingots left too, so that really shows you the power of the the iron machine. Also, we have a nice little, yeah, a nice table in the corner. I don't like it, but it's there because I have it. Hopefully, I can, like, maybe automate this. Although, there wouldn't be a need to automate it, wouldn't, would not there? Because one of the ways of doing it is to get resin, which, if we can make this, um, this arboreal extractor. We can just get resin straight from that. Like, what do we need for that, anyway? It's just an andesite machine and a bucket. I wonder. I bet we can make this pretty, uh, soon. But before we make it, we should, uh, finish up what we're doing with the starter base. And we should get some kelp. Kelp will help us, uh, make this andesite alloy much quicker. 
And once we do that, we can find our location to settle once and for all. And make a nice big mega base. I was really considering the, uh, the desolate biome over there, the charred forest, just because it's so big. And if you really think about it, uh, building a giant factory that just spews out all this uh, pollutants and destroying the environment and all that, why not put a factory where the environment's already destroyed? You gotta think, you gotta think about the planet, you know? And, wh and while do, uh, collecting resources, I've been coming down here occasionally to breed up the cows, and I've been harvesting the sheep and all that. And now, if we take a look at this, we have a lot of wheat to spare, and a lot of seeds, too. I especially like all of the seeds, because you can throw them in here. And it can make some bone meal, which is what's been supplying a lot of the... the a lot of white dye for the lime dye for the slime. So th this has been very helpful. All right, there's still an awful lot left to super glue. I'm probably gonna end the episode before it's finished super gluing, but we're gonna spend the remainder of this episode looking at something that I haven't actually looked at for a while, and that is the quest system. I've basically completely forgotten about this. I should really look at this and kind of go over some of the stuff here because it's we're getting into the point now where we might be interested in learning about trading or get a, or the the questing board and all that. So let's let's have a look here. Welcome to the overview. You can always come back here and catch up on your current position and the progression of technology. If you look closely, your journey to the moon completes the final step of the way to the right side. So yeah, journey to the moon. The earliest inventions reveal one's resourcefulness with low level equipment. Auto crafting? None. Filtering? Not cheap. Item transport? May the belt spaghetti mesh in your favor. After hitting the check mark above, the first chapter of the factory guide will become accessible. Alright, let's go ahead and check that. High aspirations. So the next step is having andesite machinery. I guess I have to complete chapter one. Here's chapter one. Chapter one start. Before you start making your way down the quest line, these quests are an automation guide. Always view them as recommendations on what you should have a passive supply of. The flow graph roughly depicts the connection between relevant recipes and processing. Happy engineering. Go ahead and check that. Speed run. The rigid flow graph of this automation guide may suggest that items aren't accessible until they have been automated. Be reassured that if a convenience of later ages such as filtering would be helpful early on, you may have access to it already, albeit with a little extra work. Yeah. Basically, if you're really grindy, uh, you can really grind out the, uh, the more advanced stuff without automating all this stuff. No, no, we're going to try and automate this stuff before moving on to more advanced things. But yeah, this is just a, a nice little flow graph telling you all the stuff you need to automate andesite machines. Andesite lift. All your andesite is likely not being generated near your factory. Figure out a way to bring it to the surface. Oh, okay, interesting. I guess... Yeah, well, oh wait, Bedrock's bounty. Gathering andesite manually takes time. Thankfully, Bedrock can cause lava to form andesite indefinitely. I didn't know about this part. At this time, it's best to set up drills to break generated blocks between lava and water. Since Bedrock is blocking the space beneath, you'll have to find a way to collect the drops from other sides. That's fascinating. I didn't know about that. So if we take a look at Andesite, custom generating. Yeah, sure enough. Ignis Extruder. Oh, so using something called an Igneous Extruder. Okay, I'm guessing this is the exact same. But all of the uh, generation stuff is... It looks pretty similar, I will say. What about all... 
all recipes. Yeah, it's it's looking a little random. So making the cobble you have on the side and making the actual block. Okay. But it requires bedrock. How would you grab that? Fascinating. Maybe a fan? Have a fan kind of blow it to the side. And have a collection system next to the piece of bedrock. And that explains why the pulley was in that, uh... Well, it was in the quest tree, because you could have, like, an elevator, collect all that stuff, and, uh, bring it up to the top. I guess, but... I don't know, without the portable storage unit, which is a brass machine, I don't really see the ability to do that as... Like, like I don't really see being able to do that in the early game. Either way, this would definitely be something to invest in. Like, uh... Just, just a water wheel hooked up to a fan, and just blow the stuff into a storage unit. Like, it's pretty simple. And to think, I could have had that happening the whole time instead of looking out for andesite, but it's okay. We, we can still just get andesite the old-fashioned way, while uh, thinking about andesite generating designs for the factory. Besides, here's another thing I wanted to look at, was the market. Now, this is why I think this is interesting, because you can get a saw that's unbreakable for your mechanisms. You can get the, like, unbreakable flash drive, unbreakable magnet, unbreakable screwdriver. And you can get a bunch of other things too, like, you can buy an, a totem of undying. You can buy a piece of bedrock, which I imagine would be very useful for uh, anti-site generating, although I imagine it's not very easy to uh, pick up. So yeah, you get a bunch of this stuff, and don't even get me started on the shipments. If we can produce a bunch of a certain item, we can turn it in for coin, and then we can buy all of these all this stuff with that coin by putting an import of this type into a machine, and it would just feed out all these materials as you feed in coin. And I can see this as being pretty useful. Let's look at the lifesavers. Lifesavers is something I haven't really looked at. Nature's compass. Spanish moss. Oh, wow. Okay. So these are some of the... Carved pumpkin. Placing a carved pumpkin on a hay bale creates a straw golem. Who can take care of your crops. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Too bad I've already got a machine that does that for me. And I can- I could have had a schematic given to me, I didn't have to craft a schematic. Big barrels, I, I, I could have gotten an upgrade. That's- that's awesome. Alright, yeah, this just shows you how much more I should, uh, pay attention to this stuff. So, I'm not gonna go over every single little thing here. I might refer to this thing every now and then, looking at the- Like, maybe, I like, the high aspirations thing here, and- Maybe the overview, but other than that, I think I'm going to leave most of this stuff under the hood, just, you know, just to go through, because I'd imagine it'd be pretty boring if I kind of went through and looked at a bunch of graphs all episode, you know what I mean? So, I'm, I'm just saying this now more for myself, because I have been ignoring it this entire time. <laughs> and I really shouldn't be. Oh, is it done? It's finished. And look at that, we got oh my gosh, it only used like 10 gunpowder. And we have an empty schematic. Yep, it's done. It sh which means, if we pull this lever, this entire thing is now a minecart contraption. We can even, uh, push it forward. Look at that, you can't climb the rope though, because it becomes a solid object. And... We can pick it up. The whole thing is now in our hand. Isn't that so cool? We can have a giant mobile base in the palm of our hand. We can now slap this down. The whole world just lagged for a second, but that's okay. And now... You can just climb up it. That's so cool. I love that so much. I kind of wish the lamps were yellow, but I can change that later. 
And if we come all the way up to the top, we can right click this. And now we have a giant windmill. So it's basically a portable windmill. And this thing likely generates a lot of, uh, a lot of stress units that we can use in here. Like a lot. This is a big windmill. What I always like doing with windmills like this are riding them to the top. <laughs> oh man, I love doing that kind of stuff. Parkouring on windmills and windmill contraptions. Although, oh, whoops, I kind of slipped. <laughs> kind of slipped off my windmill, but that, that, that's okay. Alright, so, next episode, we're going to focus a little bit on filling up this starter base and kind of, kind of, Making this our main base, kind of move, try to try to move out of that hill and move into this. That way we can pick up our uh, our uh, our base and move it to wherever we need to. All right, it's not going to be very easy though, I think, because we're going to have to fit all those big old contraptions into this even smaller space. We'll figure it out though. So thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing. And remember, the wasteland is watching. See ya.